Welcome to Amaro's Intuitive Studio. This is the beginner's guide to new moons. Before we get into that, why should you care about the moon at all? The moon represents and influences our intuition, deepest needs, unconscious and dreams, our gut feelings, spontaneous emotions, responses and reactions that we have, and habitual behaviors. Some keywords for the moon are listed here. Emotion, mood, reflection, unconditional love, inner rhythms, protection, cycles, security, instinct, rituals, deep lessons, responses. And it's that part of us that's not quite on the surface of our conscious understanding. When you know what you mean, but you can't quite say it or express it to someone else. The moon mediates our inner and outer worlds. It rules the rhythmic ebb and flow of activity and energy both around us and in our bodies. And it reflects the light of the sun onto things that are usually hidden in shadow, both in reality and metaphorically within us. The moon is a focal point that we can choose to utilize to help us naturally track many different habits and cycles in our lives. Simply noticing and noting these shifts on your calendar can help you to become more mindful of self-destructive habits. The moon's gravitational force generates the Earth's tides, and since our bodies are made up mostly of water, it sort of pulls at our senses, our intuition, and even our automatic body processes. If we are harnessing these energetic opportunities within our own cycles of our unique bodies and lives, we can experience tremendous waves of growth and healing. And I am going to go into detail about all the different ways that we can do that, utilizing a new moon in particular in this video. And the reason we're here is that when I began to do rituals for my own new moon healing practices, I began to get enchanted with the feeling of power that I felt using the opportunities that I had to access deeper levels of emotional health for myself. And I believe that you will experience something very similar. The new moon is a phase of the moon, and that is what we're talking about today. An entire moon cycle is about 29 and a half days. This is when the sky is dark and it's called the invisible phase. Where does the moon go? So the alignment of the sun and the moon and the earth leaves the side of the moon that faces the earth in darkness because the moon is in between the sun and the earth and it rises together in the daytime sky. So the moon is actually up in the day and sets around the same time as the sun. So that's why we can't really see it to the naked eye from our perspective. Often, these are the best nights for stargazing because when the sky is clear, there is no light and you can see even further into the galaxy. The new moon is a clean slate and a fresh opportunity to clarify your intentions to the universe. A friend of mine says, use the empty sky as a blank canvas on which to paint your existence. It is time to hold the stirrings that we feel in our bodies and listen to the messages that they are trying to convey to us. Now that we're at the ritual creation part of this process, I want to pause for a minute and point to the little to-do list because this is like a cheat sheet for you. My friend and I created a whole bunch of energetic rituals, including journal prompts, a tarot spread, meditations, and these are all included kind of in a little package along with this new moon video. And I wanted to create this one in particular to help us learn comprehensively about new moons, what they're for, and how to utilize them so we can take this forward and build on our understanding of why we're here and why creating rituals is important. All the links that you'll need to have one comprehensive moon ritual all in one little package is right below here in the description. How would you even start to create your own ritual at all? 
here are a few mantras to start with. This is something that you just want to sit with. If they strike you, write them down or make up your own. I have the power to shape my reality. Opportunities are always coming to me. I can create a life I choose. And I am always growing. Journaling is a great way to make sense of all the new feelings and ideas that you're discovering that come from within. Here are a few writing prompts in case you're looking for some ideas. What new goal would make me feel most satisfied? What life do I want to create if anything was possible? What rhythms do I want to embrace in my day-to-day -day life? And what do I appreciate most? And am I on that list? After we sit a while, write or meditate on these things, how do we bring them into life? So right now, this is a seed state and we are conserving energy to move forward. We are kind of saving up that energy for something that we have not done before. And this is a great period to map out those things and to tie up loose ends that maybe are sitting around and need to be taken care of before you can actually invest your energy into something new. The energy and clarity about this phase can feel a little bit muddy or low, but it is not a time for big decisions anyway. This is a time to marinate in our favorite ideas, make lists, and take our very first steps towards what will feel most satisfying in the long term. Activities to anchor these things in would be like meditation, uh, resting, and just slowly integrating these things maybe in action in small ways. Take small steps. Right now, we can serve our energy and make plans. And then we're going to take steps towards those, okay, with commitment to these fresh new habits, partnerships, and relationships that we have already been craving. If you decide that one of the new habits you want to pick up this new moon is studying astrology, every single one of the resources, both free and available for purchase, that I use to compile these videos is listed here, and a clickable link is below in the description. Here are a few of my favorite rituals to harness the energy of the moon. First one is a clarity ritual. I do a tarot and oracle spread. And this brought me such great healing in my own personal practice that I teamed up with my friend who created a moon journal and we began to create rituals to share on YouTube every two weeks. And not only is that for you to experience this really cool energy and get involved in experiencing it for yourself, but also for me to keep me accountable and experiencing these energies every few weeks as well. The next thing that you could try is a manifestation ritual, my favorite, and it's called the permission slip. I began to do this New Year's Eve going into 2021, and I started with the feeling of prosperity. All I did was write a little note to myself, date it, and grant myself permission to experience a new energy. And I began to receive it. And it was just really simple. I never looked at it after, uh, and I found it a month later. And it was just something that I let myself softly plant and then blossom without overthinking it. The next ritual I wanna share is just a chill ritual to kind of engage your creativity or just address and process different things that are coming up in your body and mind journaling like we had already talked about but any way that you like in any manner that feels right to you there's no right way to journal i know how confusing it can be to get started so we actually have a fully downloadable moon journal right here that can help planning with goals and even keeping track of those in a consistent way whatever works for you use an ipad use your notebook use journal prompts or just sit still and think and write out what comes to you write draw just feel through it and it is just meant to anchor you into your own creativity 
and allow these things just to process without again overthinking them. Uh, another ritual I want to share with you is a cleansing ritual. I love a home spa. I just don't do it consistently enough. But when it comes to my moon rituals, I do remember I make that space specifically for myself. And something really cool that you can do is make this just a special time where you put a mask on and a bath bomb, light a candle for yourself, do whatever feels right, but make it a whole experience and make time and space for yourself to do this as much as you need to. Sometimes we just have to relax and let that wash down the drain. So the next thing I want to share about new moons is meditations. There are so many different ways that you can sit or dance in meditation for a moon ritual. I do believe we should all adapt different types of meditations in our day-to-day -day lives so that we can be walking in meditation. We can just be completely immersed. It's not tuning out, it's tuning into our body and into this moment. So meditation is really about tapping into ourselves in presence. It can feel a thousand different ways and there are endless methods, okay? There is no way that this is supposed to be experienced. But if you give yourself the opportunity to try lots of different stuff, you will absolutely find things that work for you. I do have suggestions for you, but I want you to find things that you enjoy, that feel good, and that make you feel like you are growing and experiencing something new in your body and in yourself that feels better than it did yesterday or a year ago. That is what meditation is all about. So the moon moves through different zodiac signs every few days and you will actually feel that you do feel that and you may not know why some days you know when we feel sad or some days we feel more fiery and oftentimes these are emotions that are linked to something down deep in us that we need to listen to each new moon gives us an opportunity to Feel the pattern in the cycle. There is a pattern in cycle every year as well as every month to how the moons move. And there are also patterns and cycles to how you operate in the world. So every single month, this might feel like a different experience. And that's an opportunity for us to jump into these portals and to plant new intentions with what we are feeling. We're gonna take a moment to go through each of these particular moon moods and describe what the best way to harness this energy might be. As we go through these, if you're interested in one of these energies, there is going to be a deeper beginner's guide to the zodiac energy for each one of these archetypes, as well as a meditation that matches each for your new moon ritual. The new moon in Aries is fiery. Trust yourself to take action, try something innovative, and go at it with gusto and confidence. A new moon in Taurus is earthy. Enjoy life's simple physical pleasures, savor good food, and indulge in activities that bring us in touch with nature and our bodies. A new moon in Gemini is an air energy. This is great for improving communication skills, listening to others and appreciating their viewpoints rather than always looking to find one elusive answer. A new moon in Cancer is watery energy. It's a great time to concentrate on new ways to enhance our family and home life, to build up our feelings of safety and security deep down within and under our feet. A new moon in Leo is fiery again. Taking pride in ourselves as unique individuals, realizing that our power is in being responsible for our own lives and giving ourselves warmly and generously to those we love. New moon in Virgo is earthy and it encourages us to set specific routines that will help us manage our lives in constructive and mindful ways. It's a great time to handle finer details of our day-to-day -day lives so we can free both our minds and physical space of clutter. A new moon in Libra is air energy, and it, it is a great time to rebalance our relationships, make peace with ourselves and our environments. A new moon in Scorpio is watery. 
it is the best time to work on self-mastery skills. Explore down deep about what's missing in our lives that leads us to engage in self-destructive behaviors. A new moon in Sagittarius is fiery. It increases our understanding and awareness of the world around us with confidence and optimism because we focus on transcending the details of the mundane life. A new moon in Capricorn helps us to focus on practical and attainable long-term goals with this earthy energy. We can work on developing maturity, making commitments, and recognizing our responsibilities. New moon in Aquarius is air energy, great time to brainstorm. We can revitalize ourselves through experiences that are new and different, and recognize that sometimes we have to detach a little bit to receive perspective. And last but not least is watery Pisces, new moon, accepting the flaws in ourselves and others as a different kind of perfection, starting projects that require imagination and putting a time aside for daydreaming and relaxing. Thank you so much for being here, for learning about the new moon. Which one of these rituals are you gonna try first? A few fun facts about new moons. There are higher tides. During this moon phase, the new and full moon, the moon and sun's gravitational forces combine to push the Earth's water in the same direction. These tides are known as spring tides or king tides. Fun fact number two, you can only see a new moon during a solar eclipse. So two to three times a year, the new moon's orbit crosses the sun's path seen from our perspective here on Earth. And then the new moon comes between the Earth and the sun and becomes visible in the silhouette in front of the sun. Super and micro moons are based on the moon orbiting the Earth in an elliptical path. Sometimes it's further away and sometimes it's closer. When the new moon is closer to us, it's known as a super moon and can have a stronger effect on us. And when it's further away, it's known as a micro moon and can have a more subtle effect on our emotions. A dark moon, fun fact number four, is the, the term that used to be used for the new moon. So about a day after the new moon actually occurs, the, a really thin sliver of the moon starts to reappear again. And this used to be called the new moon when the darkest phase was called the dark moon. Thank you so much for being here, for learning about the new moon. Which one of these rituals are you gonna try first? 